Hey guys, looking at writing some equations for word problems here. One of my all-time favorite math memes, how I see math, word problems. If you have four pencils and I have seven apples, how many pancakes will fit on the roof? Purple. Because aliens don't wear hats. And I know that sometimes you feel like you see the math problems this way, but it's been my goal all year to make sure that over time it stops feeling like that. So... We are going to look at writing equations for word problems. So in this video, it's the equation that's the goal, not the solution to the problem. And I know that's going to be hard for some of you because you're good at finding the solutions to the problem and you don't really see the point for writing the equation. Remember that we're teaching you how to organize, how to organize your mathematical thought. If you can write these simple equations when you get to a much more complicated math, like trigonometry, you're going to have an easier time writing those equations. You can ask the high school kids, lots of word problems, got to be able to write equations, better learn it now. All right, no more stalling. Let's get started. All or remember that is means equals. Twice a number decreased by 29 is 7. So when we read that, twice a number, we know that's 2x. Decreased by 29 is, is my equal sign, 7. So, when we see that word is, or some derivation of the word, uh, the verb to be, um, is, was, something along those lines, you've got an equal sign. 32 is one half of a number increased by 8. Now, you could have that, or you could have 32 is, one half of a number could be the number divided by 2, and then increased by 8. Uh, there's a cat hair on my iPad. Hold on. Sorry about that. Had to get that off. Okay. Anyway, like we've learned in class, one half times is the same thing as divide by two. All right. The quotient of five more than a number and 50. So five more than a number, the quotient of that and 50 is 10. So we're not solving these and we're not going to always have equations like this where you're just translating the words. It's not just going to be, here's me reading an equation. It's going to be practical problems too you have a practical problem, the first thing that you're going to do every single time you read it when you're going to write an equation for it is define a variable. That doesn't mean you go and find your glossary of the textbook you don't even have um, and, uh, or you Google the word variable and define it like a vocabulary word. No, no, no. That's not what that means. What define a variable means is to write down a brief description of the unknown. I forgot to show you guys. Hold on one second. I forgot to show you my new pointer that this app has. It's totally a lightsaber, and I got kind of excited when I saw that. Um, so, oh, I can even do two at a time. All right. Anyway, I got to have a lightsaber duel. Anyway, uh, Janine, no, Jeannie. Jeannie has $17 in her piggy bank. How much money does she need to buy a video game that costs $68? Now, I know that you look at that and you're like, well, I just subtract that in 68 minus 17. Duh, the comp to 51. Easy. Right, but we want to write an equation. So the first thing we do is recognize what our unknown value is. Our unknown here is the money Genie needs. So let's make X equal the money Genie needs. And yes, you're literally going to write this down because it's going to make the problems we do a little later a whole lot easier. So X is the money Genie needs. She has 17. She needs X dollars to get the video game that's $68. And yes, of course, we can go ahead and solve it by subtracting 17 from each side. But again, the, the equation is the thing, like Shakespeare. The play is the thing. I don't even remember what play that's from, but that's one of those old quotes from Shakespeare people like to bring up. The play is the thing. Anyway, the equation is the thing. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure we understand how to write them. So that one was pretty easy. Let's do another. Two-thirds of the students in the seventh grade participated in the after-school activity. If 74 kids were there, how many kids are in the seventh grade? So what's our unknown? Well, our unknown is the number of kids where in the seventh grade. Two-thirds of the students in the seventh grade. Of is times. So two-thirds of is two-thirds times n equals 74. Remember, no need for a time sign. Remember, two-thirds n just means two-thirds times n. And we also have two different methods for this kind of problem. Let's do it with one step and two steps. First, we'll do it with two steps. 
which sounds like we're dancing, which, oh, that's not a four. I'm not much for dancing at all, um, ever. All right, so two steps first. First, we're going to get rid of the fraction by multiplying by three. So now I have 2n equals, okay, 370s would be 210. Three fours would be 12. So 210 and 12 is 222. Now we'll divide by 2. That's our second step. So n equals 111. Now the reason I taught you this right here, the reason I taught you this is because it's the same thing as multiplying by 3 and dividing by 2 because the 3 is in the numerator. The 3 is in the numerator and the 2 is in the denominator. So multiply by 3, 3 in the numerator, divide by 2. Can I change the color of it? Now it's always red. So apparently I guess I have to be a Sith. All right, so 3 halves of 74. Now this, again, the thing here is that I can now, if I have a calculator, I can actually do this really easily with a calculator. Just multiply by 1.5, or multiply by 3 divided by 2, or you know something along those lines. You still get the same answer. Okay, of course, not a different answer. It's just faster. And it's something that if you understand the concept, it's going to speed up your processes for later problems we learn. OK, Jill sold half her comic books, then bought 16 more. If she has 36 books now, how many did she have originally? Pause it and try it yourself, please. Start with defining a variable, then write your equation and solve. All right, define a variable. Um, B, number of comic books Jill had in the first place. She sold half. So she cut her amount she had in half. Then she bought 16. So she got 16 more, and she ended up with 36. So we're like, it's like we're telling a story with the equation. She had her number of comic books. Okay, I'm going to switch back to something else because the lightsaber is kind of cool, but after a while the sound gets annoying. Comic books, she got rid of half, so she cut what she had in half. Then she bought 16 more, and now she has 36. And now I can go ahead and solve the equation. So B over 2 is equal to 20. And multiply to get rid of the divided by 2 there. B equals 40. So Jill had 40 comic books. And I won't be lazy this time. I'll write it out. Ta-da! All right, let's do another one. Again, try pausing it. And then do it yourself, and then you can see how you did. For, uh, for a field trip, four students rode in cars, and the rest filled nine buses. How many students were in each bus? if 472 students were on the trip. So sometimes the question in the problem tells you what your unknown is. So that's what we're gonna have this time. So I'm not gonna use S for students because I don't like to use S, I'm gonna use K. So number of kids on one bus. On one bus. All right, number of kids on each bus. So if, if K is the number of kids on each bus and there were nine, whoops, Okay, missed part of it. Nine buses plus four students who rode in cars. So they must have had their parents going with them. Well, lucky them. I think the bus is more fun anyway most of the time. Okay, so there's our equation. 9K plus 4 equals 472. So nine buses plus four kids equals 472 kids on the bus or on the trip. Subtract four from each side. So 12 minus 4 would be 8, making that a 6. So that's a 468 equals 9K. And that is divisible by 9. I just checked. I just checked. So we're going to divide by 9. And at this point, these steps should be getting easier to figure out for these equations. These are not tough equations. We're doing some basic stuff. You don't have to worry as much about negatives with these because you don't have as many negatives in the real world um, application problems. Like you can't have negative students. Uh, well, you can have negative students, but not in the manner that we're talking about here. Um, all right, 468 divided by 9. So 9 goes into 46 five times, that's 45, so one left over. Nine goes into 18, two times. So 52 kids on a bus. Gosh, that's a lot. That's a lot. So 52 kids can ride each bus. H, and that should have an E. All right, next. OK, 
Okay, consecutive integer problems. These are a lot easier than you think. It's formulaic. It's the same plan every time. Try it my way. Write it out like I'm asking you to, and these will not be hard. The sum of three consecutive integers is 96. Find those integers. So, three consecutive. Consecutive means one after the other, like two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 43 million and three, 43 million and four, 43 million and five. Doesn't matter, just consecutive in a row, okay? Three consecutive integers. Anytime you do a problem like this, name the first integer x and write it out like I'm showing you. I promise they won't be hard if you, if you do it like I'm showing you. The next integer after x is one more than x. And the next integer after that is two more than x. Look at my example up top. 2, 3, 4. 3 is 1 more than 2. And 3 and 4 is 1 more than 3. The sum of those three numbers, the sum of the three numbers is 96. So add them together. x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2. And now you can see why we learned, and the sum is 96. Now you can see why we learned to combine like terms. Because in this equation, I have to simplify first by combining my three like terms, then I can solve. So how many x's do I have? Three of them. Oh, I changed it to an n for some reason. Let's fix that. 3x plus 3 equals 96. Now I can go about solving that the rest of the way. And why don't you actually finish that, you guys? And why don't you have those three integers? And when you come to show me your homework, after you watch this video, I want you to tell me what those three integers were, those three consecutive integers in this problem. All right, see you guys in class.